TGC Requiem here. We are doing some Death Shadow Jund today. This is actually a playback of my last league. I'll keep it off screen so that the uh, results are hidden. If you're interested in following it all uh, on Twitter, I've got my address down in the bottom corner. Sometimes there are polls to let uh, people who are watching subscribers uh, vote on which deck I play. Um, have been voted on elves for the last couple weeks, so I just wanted to make sure I got some shadow, <coughs> excuse me, some shadow videos out there too, because it's a great deck, fun to play. Uh, so this one, we are on the draw. Let's see here. Um, I guess this is a, it's, it's not a great hand, um, but with two baubles and being on the draw, I'm actually okay with this. We have interaction and we have a couple creatures. If our opponent happens to be like a Thossies deck, um, we've got some multiples on key, key spell and Tarmogoyf and bauble to help draw into stuff. I just, I feel like we, we are okay with this hand. Um, I probably would keep this the majority of the time. Maybe not so much if I knew what my opponent was on, but in the blind, definitely going to keep it. Opponent plays foothills and passes, so not a whole lot of information there. Could be a shadow Jun player themselves. Um, elves, I mean, there could be a whole, whole bunch of stuff here. But we draw into Thought Seas, which is pretty great. Uh, so I think we're going to actually just... Lead out foothills into probably overgrown tomb here. Yep, and then we'll just go ahead and throw a thought. Well, we actually will bobble first. So before we, before we um, thought sees our opponent, we're going to bobble. Take a look at what's on the top of their library. That's a lightning bolt. So looking maybe more like a jund. Oops. So we actually have Titan Shift here. So um, looking at my hand right now, we're going to be 3-4 on our Tarmogoyf, but he's going to draw a Lightning Bolt. Um, so if he draws a second Lightning Bolt, he'll be able to kill our first Tarmogoyf, and this is usually a race, so we want to probably avoid that. Um, looks like he's a little light on land draws. He has three lands, but no way to... Um, really ramp ahead right now. So Escape Shift and Primeval Titan aren't that troublesome. Summoner's Pact, I suppose he could try and use Summoner's Pact to like go get a uh, Sakura Tribe Elder to help ramp, but he'd need four mana to even do that. So really nothing here is a threat. He, he's definitely in a position where he would double Lightning Bolt or Tarmogoyf, I feel like. And so we definitely want to take the Lightning Bolt here, I think, which is kind of bizarre, not something I would normally feel like I want to do against Titan Shift. Um, but in the situation, it seems good. I'm going to draw... Oh, Inquisition. So now we can actually go get that... Um, that Summoner's Pact we know about. Uses the forest. And we drew a lily, which is great. So we just want to get down, um, as much as we want to Inquisition our opponent, um, we really just need to get a threat down. So we're going to play Wood of Foothills here. Probably just go get another Overgrown Tomb that I could see Blood Crypt potentially. Um, just to make sure we have a way to answer a um, Primeval Titan if we were to draw our Terminate. And then Bobble. And then we're going to probably wait till our opponent's upkeep to Bobble here. Or at least wait for him to crack his fetch. Yeah, so we stop there at the uh, upkeep to see what he has. Looks like a mountain. So still not a whole lot going on. He's getting close to scape shift mana, but not a whole lot he can do with it. 
Uh, and we actually draw another land. So the land draw here is pretty great because that's going to allow us to both Inquisition and play our other Tarmogoyf. So we will be able to take that Summoner's Pact, which would allow us to um, stall out his ramping because that would help him go get a secure secure a Tribe Elder that he could crack for an extra land and then just pay for the, the Pact cost at upkeep. So... It's also possible we just want to jam out Tarmogoyf in a Death Shadow, but I feel like with the Lightning Bolt that just doesn't really benefit us. So we're going to Inquisition here, and I'm almost certain we're just going to take that Summoner's Pact. Attack, and then uh, play another Tarmogoyf. When it plays out a mountain, not a whole lot they can do against Scapeshift just doesn't really benefit them right now. Fatal Push, a little bit of a dead draw in this matchup. Not completely dead, but definitely not the greatest. Sometimes you still got to get rid of that Sakura Tribe Elder before um, blocks, but again, they don't have one here. So now we have a choice to Liliana of the Veil, make our opponent discard a card, or Traverse for another threat. And I feel like here it seems like it would make the most sense to Liliana. Um, are there any inst there are instants and sorceries in the graveyard? The only thing we don't really have in the graveyard is creature, so maybe we can get him to pitch his primeval titan. Uh, but we have him on a two-turn clock. So traversing, and we have removal. So I, really, I almost feel like either way you slice it here, um, there's not really a wrong play, but I, I do like just taking the advantage of minimizing what the opponent has in hand. And then probably just pitch the Fatal Push. Opponent pitches their Scape Shift. Swinging for eight, and again, we, gotta, we have them on a two-turn clock. Um, even if they draw into a creature here, Liliana or Fatal Push should take care of them. We should have this game closed out. Yeah, so opponent just concedes. Um, so that puts us up 1-0. I do find that Titan Shift is a little bit of a tougher matchup for, for the Shadow deck. Uh, they, they're just really pretty consistent. This opponent kept a little bit of a slow hand, not much to, to ramp him into his key spells, but basically um, the deck is consistent enough at getting to its damage, and, and it doesn't even need to do a ton of damage against us, uh, so usually it can easily win the turn it's able to cast a prime Primeval Titan uh, against Shadow since we're putting ourselves so low. Um, but we're going to go ahead and close out of that and we'll go on to game two. Uh, if we look at the sideboard, we can see that I pulled out two Fatal Pushes, two Lilianas of the Veil, uh, and one Abrupt Decay from the main deck. And that would have been to bring in two Collective Brutality, which are good for hitting the Scape Shifts, two Teamer Battle Rage. So if we look at the sideboard, I actually pulled out all the Fulminator Mages because the matchups that I want them in, you know, you're just really trying to be fast. And um, I mean, they're also good in grindy matchups, but I was less worried about that. I kind of come to the conclusion, the reason I've been playing a build more like this with Abzan Shadow, and I really liked how it could almost play just the general mid-range Abzan game better with like the four Lilianas. It's also why I'm not running uh, Colagon's Command and why I'm running uh, a couple Grim Flayers. Is basically, um, I, I just like being able to play, the flexibility of being able to not go all in on the life loss and play more of a general BGX Jund. Uh, or Obzon game, depending on which version I'm playing. But I did miss with the Obzon build the ability to just close games out really quick out of nowhere, especially against the combo opponents. 
and teamer battle rage is the big the big thing there. And so basically what I did is I've decided kind of like Fulminator Mage is, is good and it, it works in some grindy games really well, but the decks that I'm really missing the um, the Teamer Battle Rage is the combo decks. Obs on Shadow sometimes just a little too slow, and so I wanted the Teamer Battle Rage. And I figure the build of this deck, having the four Lilianas of the Veil and extra removal terminates and, and things like that, will just allow me to play the grindier games more straight up, like a BGX deck would. And um, so again, we're just we're trying to use Teamer Battle Rage to, to kind of race our opponent. So anyway, regardless, what I what I ended up bringing in was two Collector Brutalities. Um, Let's see if we can get this. So, two Collective Brutalities, two Teamer Battle Rages, and then I would have brought in that Terminate. I left one Abrupt Decay in because sometimes they have the um, Colony Garden, so kind of like a hedge against that. That helps them ramp their lands out a little bit ahead of time. And But I wanted the Terminate to help with the um, Primeval Titan. So, uh, anyway... Keep on going here. So, this is fine. Um, you definitely really want a threat. We're going to just kind of have to hope to draw into it. We're going to get one draw plus the second off the Street Wraith. We have one, two, three cards towards Delirium in case we hit want to hit Traverse. Um, not the greatest hand, probably especially on the draw, <laughs> um, in this particular matchup, um, but it's so balanced that I don't know that I would want to mulligan here. Especially knowing that this is game two and we're already ahead, which maybe is a little bit wrong, but, so we'll keep the seven here. All right, draw another land. That's less than ideal. So we're just going to go ahead and go get a Blood Crypt since we have an Overgrown Tomb in hand already. And then Inquisition our opponent. So a little bit of a slow hand again. Just two lands, the Summoner's Pack, the Bayloth. Scape shift, scape shift, and bolt. So I think we probably just take the summoners packed here. And we're not necessarily too concerned. We just got to be aware of putting our life too low with the lightning bolt. Opponent plays out their mountain. Probably want to wait to fetch. Okay, fatal push. Gonna get an overgrown tomb. Right, so then we cycle Street Wraith into Teamer Battle Rage. So we're just a creature a creature shy here. We have access to terminate and fatal push. Our opponent can't really play anything yet, though. They hit their land. All right, so bobble's nice. We can bobble and then determine if we want to play the Bloodstained Mire or the Overgrown Tomb, based on what's on the top of the library. We reveal a Traverse, and we're at four card types, so we're absolutely going to play the Overgrown Tomb, not the Bloodstained Mire here. And then we're just going to run out Liliana. Now, we're okay. Um, he's going to end up playing the Obstinate Bailoff here if we uptick, but I think it's better than not doing anything. Well, I don't know. I guess he's going to be able to kill the Liliana. But if he spends that turn attacking it, I guess at, at either point, we're going to lose the Liliana. 
Not necessarily. We have access to terminate and so I actually uptick here and I think it's just because I got lazy and didn't think through the fact that they had the obstinate bail off. Um, so this is actually really bad. We ended up pitching the terminate because we have a fatal push which you can get most of the creatures we're worried about and he gets the obstinate bail off. So this is a bit of a mistake on my part. We, I think we should have just been mana efficient and throw the Liliana out, but then waited to uptick until we had the mana to protect the Liliana, and that's where the mistake was. So we definitely can do this and let him get the bail off. That's not a problem. Um, the problem was doing that when we did it. We are going to draw the Traverse. So our opponent can just kill our Liliana here. And that's what he's doing. So again, what we could have done there is just play the Liliana out. No, we couldn't not uptick it because then he has to use the lightning bolt. So I guess either way Liliana's dead. Cost him a card either way. Hmm. Still think we would have been better suited to. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe we would have been better suited to just not do anything there. We could have saved the Liliana for a later turn as a kill spell after he maybe hit his fourth land and cast the Obstinate Bailoth. And then the opponent also had a Colony Heart Expedition this turn. And a land. Yeah. So he would have gotten the Obstinate Bailoth down, and then what we could have done the next turn is we could have played like a Bloodstained Mire that turn with the information we had. Played the Bloodstained Mire, uh, crack it, Fatal Push the Obstinate Bailoth. Then we could have played Liliana still and up and down to Although we really want to get to the Traverse. I think either way we slice it, we're probably in the sort of position where we were. I think it probably would have just been best, though, to let our opponents spend their own mana to do the obstinate bail off, which means we should have just played it out, let him lightning bolt it, and spend his mana that way. Um, definitely a little bit of a mistake there. So we get a stomping ground here. Trying to get our life total low now. I want to go get a Death Shadow. We can play that Death Shadow out. And if our opponent gets our life total low enough here, we can actually strike back for up to 24 damage. Um, so if our opponent were to say Lightning Bolt us, that puts us down to 4. Um, we could Bloodstain Meyer fetch, except we don't have any shocks left, so we'd only be able to get down to like 3, which means we'd only be able to do 18 damage. So probably not the next turn, but the turn after that we'd be looking at a potential um, lethal strike, unless our opponent were to double bolt us. Uh, so Grim Flayer is pretty nice just helps to make sure we're probably in position to kill the next turn. Our opponent is a little low on life still. Really what we need to fade here is our opponent um, drawing a sh uh, fetch land rather. If they draw a fetch land they're going to get two counters on their colony heart expedition and then they'll be able to scape shift and let's see they'll be able to scape shift. They'd only be able to do two with us but they have the lightning bolt so so now we, we look at this and we can really say, yeah, if we had just played out the Liliana and let them lightning bolt the Liliana, but again, this is just, this is still whether or not our opponent actually draws a fetch land, because if they don't draw a fetch land, I think they're just dead. Like a single land just gets them to five mana, that doesn't do anything. Of course they actually draw a fetch land. 
go figure. Um, yep, so there's two counters on the Colony Heart Expedition. So now he's going to tap out, or our opponent, they are going to, it could be a he, she, they. Um, but since it's Mr., probably a, probably a he. So they're going to crack the Colony Heart Expedition, and then they're going to go get a couple lands. A forest and a mountain. And then they're going to cast Scape Shift here. So they're going to go get a Valakut and six mountains. And that'll trigger... Oh no, it doesn't matter. What am I talking about? They don't need the lightning bolt. They're going to have six triggers of three damage each. Not sure what I was thinking when I said they still had the lightning bolt. Alright, so that just kills us. Um, so we're going to concede at that point. That puts us down. And again, despite a slow draw... Um, you know, the, the biggest thing there, the interesting thing, so going back to the Liliana play, if I had just not played Liliana at all, he would have eventually been able to obstinate Bailoff. The turn that he would have been able to obstinate Bailoff was the turn that he played the Colony Heart Expedition, but we'd have been in position there to get our Death Shadow down at that point. So if he did that, he couldn't play the Colony Heart till the next turn, which means he wouldn't have had three counters. The fetch land would only get him two counters on the Colony Heart Expedition. We would have been able to kill and attack. I wonder if the sequencing, the sequencing there may have given us a chance. Kind of, well, either way we slice it, we, we made a mistake and it may have cost us the game. So we're back on the play here. We're going to keep this. Let's see here. So three hands, three cards. Um, this is actually not too bad. We have the ability to get our life total down pretty fast. Street rates, a free redraw too. Brutality can get escape shift and a little more aggressive. I, I like this on the, on the um, play. We can actually fetch Street Wraith, ideally get a one drop, Hand Disruption would be perfect, and then we can play Tarmogoyf turn two. Opponent Mulligan's down to six, that's always great. So we're going to fetch first, we want to thin the deck of lands, pretty minor effect, but still, when you're Street Wraith in, increase your odds a little bit. Magic is a game of accumulated percentages. Collective Brutality. And then Collective Brutality is fine. Again, we just like it because it can get scape shift where maybe Inquisition cannot. So we don't really get to do a whole lot here, but that's fine. Uh, so opponent's going to play a Search for Tomorrow. Or suspend a Search for Tomorrow, rather. Another fetch land. So, Tarmogoyf is only a 2-3 here, but even if he has a lightning bolt, that's going to be the third type in the graveyard, which will make Tarmogoyf a 3-4 and outsize the um, the lightning bolt, so we're, we're good with this. We're also in great shape to, to get a Death Shadow down next turn. Sakura Tribe Elder. So, okay, so we're actually in really good shape. We're in a position where we could collect a Brutality, the Sakura Tribe Elder, pitch a land, go after his hand for a Hand Disruption spell, and still play the Death Shadow with the uh, other Verdant Catacombs. So we're looking really solid here. Just got to see what the opponent's hand looks like. Oh, and another Death Shadow. Ooh, ooh-wee. We could also just play another Death Shadow here, and then have a lot of power on board. I think we definitely get at the hand though, because we really want to limit their ability to all of a sudden just ramp out ahead of us. So I think we, yeah, we're going to target the Sakura Tribe Elder, take a peek at the opponent's hand. Of course, you'll sacrifice the Tribe Elder 
in response, which we knew was going to happen. So explore, explore, fog, and scape shift. So explore is good. He could draw and play an extra land. If he gets a land, he could explore again, potentially play an extra land, get way ahead of us. Um, though we're going to be swinging in for four. So, we have, so we're probably taking an instant either way. He still is a ways off. He has to hit on both explorers to even be able to escape shift. And at that point, he's only at six land. So we definitely want to get rid of the fog, I think, here. And then we'll be swinging in for three, seven next turn. And then we're pretty close to lethal the next turn, right? We'd be at seven more, which puts him down to three. And we could collect a brutality of him to make him lose two life puts him to one, then he can't fetch. So yeah, I definitely think we take the fog here. Oh wait, no, we're only swinging for three this turn. So that's not as good. Definitely take the fog though. So now Tarmogoyf gets to swing for four and we play a shadow. So search for tomorrow, he's going to get a basic. So again, he can cast and we would expect he's going to go explore, explore, explore. He has to hit two lands for this to really be a real threat to us, however. Doesn't look like he hit a land. It's a Kura Tri Builder. So now we're kind of back in the same boat we were the previous turn, where we know he has... Um, escape shift and explore now and we can just go take the scape shift if we want and that pretty much takes away his win condition and we can almost certainly regardless of what we draw just play another death shadow terminate yeah so we're just going to collect a brutality here i think on the sakura tribe elder pitch in the terminate what did our opponent draw Another scape shift. Okay, well, so now that he has another scape shift, I think it's clear we just want to take the explore. Um, we were probably going to take the scape shift, but since he has two of them, really what we want to do is just make sure he can't cast scape shift in time. By taking the explorer, there's no chance of getting, him getting two lands, which would allow him to scape shift us the following turn. Um, we should have him dead before then. So we're just going to take the explore here. And then we'll play out our Death Shadow. And swing in for eight. And I don't know there's much he can do. I suppose if he gets a... Right, I mean, even if he gets Sakura Tribelder, he can only block one creature. I don't think there's anything he can do here. Yep, and so we get the concession. And we get a two... 1 in the match and a 1-0 to start the league. Um, again, I do th think this deck is pretty good against the Shadow decks in general. Um, slightly favorable, I wouldn't say super favorable, um, but slightly favorable. Though I think maybe going with more of a Team or Battle Rage game plan makes it a little more likely that you can win uh, over the Fulminator Mages. Um, I do feel like our opponent maybe kept some slower hands, which played into our favor there. But either way, uh, quick 2-1, and we'll be back with the next match shortly.